What's up guys, Pete here, and welcome to a very special knife review. Today you guys will finally get to see the knife that I have been ooing and aahing about for many a month. This, as you can see, and for those of you who may have guessed in other videos, this is a Kaiser Cutlery knife. Now, before I get into the knife itself, and while I'm unboxing here, I do want to talk about the company a little bit, as there is some, uh, some negativity in the community towards Kaiser that I just want to kind of talk about a little bit. So there are two main gripes that uh, your average person will have with Kaiser. Uh, first of which is that they are a Chinese knife company. Now, for uh, admittedly an understandable reason, everyone seems to think that if something comes from China, it is cheap, mass-produced garbage. That is not true in the case of Kaiser. It's utter bullshit. Uh, they have never owned a Kaiser knife, I can pretty much guarantee it, because their knives are exceptional in quality, in fit, finish, and the level of materials that you're working with. Uh, so it's utter bullshit. Uh, Kaiser makes excellent knives. Don't let anyone tell you that they're just, oh, a Chinese company that makes cheap, mass-produced crap. It's a lie. Now, the second concern is a bit more well-founded in fact, and it is a bit more concerning overall. Uh, and that is that... Whoop, Got to keep that hidden for a moment. And that is that uh, Kaiser has been copying or stealing certain designers' styles. Now, I will say this is more well-founded as I have seen the knives in question, and there's certainly a stark resemblance, most notably uh, to Todd Begg's design with his fuller with the holes punched through. Very iconic. If you're not familiar, just look up Todd Begg knives. You'll see what I'm talking about. You'll find the Kaiser in question pretty easily. Um, so yes, that part is well founded. I can see what you're talking about. I haven't looked into the legality like, hey, did he actually trademark this thing? I'm not going to talk about that today. There will be a whole separate Knife Talks video going up probably next week in regards to cloning knives, copying styles, the morality, the legality of it, etc, etc. Not today though. Today I just want to talk about this knife. This knife in question is the Kaiser Laconico Intrepid. It is a collaboration with Ray Laconico, so there is no issue with stealing a design or anything. This is made with the maker's permission in collaboration with them. So for today, we're not going to worry about that. Not dispelling it. I'm saying it's, it's a valid concern. I'm just saying I'm going to talk about it in a separate video. But with that out of the way, let's get into it with the big reveal. This absolutely beautiful knife in front of you is, as I said, the Kaiser Laconico Intrepid. An absolutely gorgeous knife that I'm going to geek out about for several minutes in this video. So before I do that and get away from myself, let me talk about the specs. Let's start off with the handle and the frame, etc. It is titanium, all titanium. It is uh, about 4.625 inches long. As you can see, it is semi-custom hardware there. Uh, it is still, you know, uh, torque spit, so you don't need custom tools to open it or anything, uh, but it is a nice little touch. As you can obviously see, it is anodized. All of the hardware except for the lock bar insert and the uh, pocket clip are custom anodized hardware, and the backspacer and the pocket clip themselves are anodized a slightly more purplish shade of blue. As you can see, it is a frame lock and it does come with a lock bar insert as well as a lock bar stabilizer that I will talk about a little bit later. Um, now, to get to that knife, I have to show you the absolute beautiful action. Look at that go. Oh my god, is that thing sexy. I will talk about the action in more detail in a moment, like I said, before I get away from myself. Let's talk about the blade. Blade length is 3.625 inches. It is CPM S35VN. As you can see, as I roll the light off of it, it is hollow ground. Very gorgeously hollow ground, might I add. It is a clip point with a very nice harpoon up here, and it is a stone washed finish, which you can kind of see as I go up here. Uh, very, very attractive. Won't show a lot of wear too easily thanks to that. Now, as I said before, uh, it is a frame lock, and it does come with a lock bar stabilizer. To those of you who aren't familiar, I'm just going to talk very briefly about this because I don't think I've mentioned this in one of my other videos. Um, with something like a frame lock as opposed to a liner lock, because there's nothing on the outside of this face to stop this from just kicking out to the side, there needs to be something in there. Generally, it's called a lock bar stabilizer. I believe it was popularized and patented originally by Rick Hinderer. Uh, that basically just prevents you from pushing this lock bar all the way out to the side. Reason being, if you were to wrench on this and there wasn't a little bar in there to keep it from going further and hyperextending, you would actually bend this whole bar out more. And if you bend it past a certain point, you will lose all detent on the knife, all retention. So this thing 
not only won't rock it out anymore, but it will just swing freely out, and you don't want that on a knife. You also won't be able to lock it up anymore because there's no more spring tension pushing this way from the, uh, the natural curvature of the lock bar. It will be kicked out way to the side and won't function properly anymore. So it's very nice that they include that. It's pretty much standard on most frame locks. Now, additionally, uh, it is actually a part of the lock bar insert. For those of you who don't know about that, uh, basically the way it works is in handle materials that aren't stain or that aren't steel, uh, whether it's titanium, carbon fiber, or more exotic materials, because your lock bar has to press right up against the hardened steel blade. Again, your blade steel very hard, very abrasive if it's scratching against a material that's softer. You don't want to chip away at the nice fancy mammoth ivory or what have you. So what normally happens is a stainless steel lock bar insert. That's just a hardened steel insert that will mate with the face in there that you can kind of see. Here, let me close the knife so you can see that top surface. That's right where the lock bar is gonna meet, is right up there. And it prevents wear and tear, at least undo wear and tear on the frame itself. It also improves longevity because you can replace that insert in this case, because it is a replaceable insert, if it ever becomes damaged or too worn. A nice little feature indeed, um, though I will say, and I want to get this out of the way real quick, one other possible gripe that is certainly valid, though I haven't had any experience with, I can see it happening. When you're dealing with a Chinese company, if they offer a limited or a full lifetime warranty, the issue you have is that they are expecting most people to not take advantage of it because it is such a hassle you're gonna to have to call customer service or email customer service, a process that could take a couple hours or a couple of weeks, depending on the method of conversation and language barriers and crappy teleprompters in other countries that are third parties and blah, 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 blah. Then after all that hullabaloo, you're gonna to have to pay for shipping and handling to and from China, most likely, which is going to be expensive. Shipping alone is going to take weeks and to actually get your knife back in your hands could take months and months. So that is a huge gripe. Um, I haven't heard of anything like that happening here, but I do know with power tools like drills or handsaws, etc., like Milwaukee and DeWalt, etc., where their companies are based in China and they have you know, the limited lifetime warranties, it's too much of a hassle to even bother. Most people just go out and buy a new tool. So that is a potential shortcoming of a Chinese knife company that is very founded in fact. Um, I haven't heard anyone having an issue with anything on their Kaiser's breaking, but it is something you should be aware of. With that out of the way, let's get back to the fun stuff. Let's talk about the action of this knife, because it is the thing that just blew my damn mind. It is super smooth, incredibly smooth. It's running on ceramic bearings, and you can tell. It is also a ceramic detent ball in there, which holds it in just long enough for you to really rock it out of there, which is great. Uh, the lockup is exceptional. There's no blade play up, down, side to side, left, right, anything. Uh, lockup is about 20%, kind of hard to tell there, but uh, about 20% I'd say. Um, and I've had no issues with slippage of any kind, no blade play at all. It is so smooth that it will just, just close. Just if you hold it up, it just drops back in. No, no messing around, it just falls just from gravity. It's absolutely astounding. I, I can't get over that enough. Um, the action is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm getting into the fangirling part a little bit, so I, I should stop for a quick moment and get back to the actual the actual specs of the knife. Um, that blade, real quick, let me show you a quick cut test. It did come incredibly sharp. Not razor sharp, admittedly, but very, very sharp, certainly. Um, and it, it's really great all the way through. No real issues at all. Uh, is it the sharpest knife I've ever had out of the box? It might be, or pretty darn close. Um, the Kershaw Leak that I had was actually one of the sharpest knives I've ever had out of the box. Uh, but this is pretty goddamn sharp. Again, not razor sharp, but certainly as sharp as you'll need it. Um, that blade finish will again prevent too much uh, scuffing from showing up, which is good. Um, and one thing I want to show you real quick, just to clarify that it's not Kaiser's fault, it's my own. Uh, I'm not sure if you caught it when I was showing you the back spacer, but right back here, you might not even be able to tell, but there's some little scuff marks on there, some little black gray scuff marks. That is 110% my own fault. Uh, my ring is tungsten carbide, it will scratch the hell out of anything, uh, and that's right where my hand rests when I go to close the knife, unfortunately. So you've got these little snail trails, these little scratches back here. That's 100% my fault. It is not a shortcoming of Kaiser or their material quality. That's my bad. I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, no issues with Kaiser there. 
Uh, some more nitpicky stuff that's exceptional. Um, the centering on the blade is basically perfect, right in the middle there. Um, the grind is pretty much perfect. It seems to be a little off to one side. It's going to be hard for you to see, but uh, it's a little off to one side, but it's still pretty much perfect. So no issues there. Um, that's that's most of the nitpicky stuff, I think. Uh, and again, the hardware here isn't uh, isn't anodized, which bugs me a little bit, but it still flows pretty nicely overall. So I really can't complain there. Uh, oh, uh, about the flipper, it is most definitely, definitely a light switch. You can't push button it at all, pretty much. It has to be a light switch. But when you do light switch it, the thing just rockets out exceptionally. Uh, one more nitpicky thing is that the lock bar, when I first got it, was a little stiff. It was actually a little unpleasant to use at first. But after, you know, a break-in period of, like, a day's worth of flipping it constantly because it's so much goddamn fun, um, it works exceptionally now. No issues at all. Uh, one more thing. The lock... Sorry, not the lock. The, um pocket clip here is only right side tip up. It is not reversible in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, it might bug some people. I personally don't care being a righty who has no preference for tip up or tip down, but it might bug you. Uh, and it does come with a tubed lanyard hole thanks to that backspacer. Again, I never put lanyards on my knives, but for those of you who do, I guess it's a nice feature to have. Uh, the blade is a little, you know, it's got a good bit of logos on there. You've got the Kaiser logo, You've got the model number down and tucked in in there. You've got the blade steel on the spine. You've got Ray Laconico. And then on this side, you have the actual model name, which is the Intrepid. So it's it's marked up with quite a few little logos there, but they're subtle enough that they're not like a huge deal. They don't detract much from the overall aesthetic of the blade, which is a very gorgeous, gorgeous blade style. Now, I want to talk about this knife as a whole. This is the best knife I have ever owned, hands down. Have I owned a lot of knives in this price range? No, I have not. But I have seen a lot of knives, and I've seen a lot of reviews, and I've seen a lot of people on our forums and our Facebook pages talk about their knives. And quite frankly, I challenge you to find a better knife in this price range, which gets me to my final point. This knife costs 220 retail. I got it for a bit less than that, uh, and I had won some money, so really I didn't have to pay much for this knife at all. Um, but for $220, and I looked, Believe me, I looked. You cannot find a better knife, in my opinion, that is a flipper of this quality with this level of materials, with this level of fit and finish and craftsmanship. I have looked on Blade HQ and Knife Center. I set my price range in the search engine and went through hundreds, if not thousands of knives by dozens of makers and could not, in my opinion, from the reviews and from my knowledge, find a knife with better materials, better quality, smoother action, better lockup, uh, more aesthetically appealing design couldn't find it anywhere I will put this knife up against Benchmade against Spyderco against Zero Tolerance without exception against Hinderer knives even I don't know enough about uh, ZT or Hinderer to say that so you know I probably shouldn't be but I'm still going to say it anyway I would put this knife up against them any day in the price range of $200 to $350 I'll bet you this knife right here will beat them in quality, in material, in fit and finish. It's exceptional. I can't say enough good things about it. I have found virtually no flaws with it at all. It's silky smooth. It's it's perfect. It really is perfect. Uh, again, the only issue is customer service probably isn't going to be too great. But other than that, the knife itself, flawless. If you find a knife that is better and in this price range, please let me know because I'm probably going to run out and buy it tomorrow. And one more thing I wanted to talk about as far as price goes, I was originally looking in the $150 range, and there are knives in the, I think like starting at 115-ish going up to like 160-ish that have the exact same materials on this blade. You've got titanium for the handle that is 3D milled, custom anodized, with custom hardware, full custom hardware, not like this, but full custom hardware where you need a custom tool. Blade steel, S35VN, with very nice array of finishes from uh, stonewashed, acid etched, I think, uh, a couple other styles perhaps, uh, and a couple different blade styles, blade shapes, for $115 to $160. And they are exceptional. The only difference is that they run on phosphor bronze bushings as opposed to ceramic bearings. They might still have a ceramic detent, but I'm not sure about that. But from what I've heard and what I've seen, the action is still pretty much as good as this. Maybe not quite as smooth because again, this thing is just, this thing is absurd, 
but basically as smooth. For, you know, almost half the price, that's pretty damn good. So if you don't have $200 to spend, maybe you got 100 bucks to spend. Go out and look at it. I highly recommend you check out Kaiser. They have great flippers starting at like 60 or 70 bucks uh, with G10 and some very attractive blade styles. Uh, I'll put some links down in the description to Blade HQ's page for them and a couple of my suggestions for different models to check out. Uh, just one little word of warning. Kaiser's naming convention is crap. So the, until recently, they did not actually name their knives. They were all these model numbers, which apparently my camera doesn't want to show you anymore. Uh, but tucked in here is the model number for this particular knife. It's, uh, there we go, KI4468. Normally, it's like KIAO something XXX1, XA1, crap like that. Very, very confusing. Even on their own website, they'll have knives mislabeled in the description as opposed to what's on the blade in the picture. Very confusing. So if you're trying to price compare, keep that in mind. It's a little difficult to do that from site to site because they all have slightly different naming conventions. But quality is exceptional throughout from what I can tell from the people I've talked to who've owned them. Uh, really good quality all the way through down through their entire line all the way up to their higher end stuff. So if you don't have $200 to spend, maybe look at some of their other stuff because it really is exceptional all the way through. Um, now, again, I, I've geeked out about this enough, but I just can't, I can't help but reiterate that this knife for this price is virtually unbeatable. You will not find a better quality knife. Come on, camera, don't, don't, don't do that. Show them the beauty of this knife in full focus, please. Thank you. You cannot find a better quality knife for that price. It's just not gonna happen. I tried. And if you do, let me know in the comments down below because I wanna genuinely know what can beat this knife for this price range. I know I've geeked out about this a lot and I, found like a fan, I sound like a fanboy, but it, it's just undeniable. This knife is exceptional and I challenge you to find a better one. That being said, I think I've covered everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I've geeked out more than enough. I'm gonna go flip this thing for a few hours after this video. Um, but I think I've said more than enough. So with that, thanks again for watching, guys. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions uh, about this knife, about the company, about anything related to EDC, or about, you know, hey, I found a better knife than this from this price range, because I'm genuinely curious. So thanks again, guys, and as always, keep your edges sharp and your mind sharper, and I'll see you in the next one.